Chilean novelist Roberto Bolaño's 1998 book, The Savage Detectives, also known as Lost Detectives Salvajes. The English version, translated by Natasha Wimmer, was published in 2007. The novel is set in the 1970s and follows two poets, Ulysses Lima and Arturo Bolano, as they seek for Cesaria Tinajero. The story is divided into three sections, told from several points of view and not in chronological order. Artists and prostitutes, slang and opulent argo, mingle in a sea of tongues. Finally, the story, which is rich in literary allusions, depicts a nostalgic look back on a certain time, place, and experience. The narrative reflects the poet's enthusiasm for their literary movement, as well as their zeal for the creative process. Juan Garcia Madero, a 17-year-old aspiring poet, narrates the first portion, Mexicans Lost in Mexico, set in 1975. After meeting Arturo Bolano and Ulises Lima, Juan quits school and moves to Mexico City. The reader sees Juan join their wandering band of poets known as the Visceral Realists. The literary school is fundamentally founded on a strong hostility to popular Mexican literary works. However, the reader is never exposed to any visceral realist poetry. The gang leads a hedonistic lifestyle with excessive drinking, drugs, and thievery. The group, which includes young poets, painters, and dancers, produces magazines, does poetry readings, and engages in heated talks while traveling from one location to another. To earn money, the members of the organization sell marijuana. Juan is introduced to a new and thrilling world of freedom and Epicurean delights, and he becomes progressively involved in the gang, despite his reservations about the notion of visceral realism. Soon, Arturo and Ulysses learn that an earlier poet has also used the term visceral realism to describe a literary movement. Cesaria Tinajero, a mysterious poet from the 1920s, is only known to have released one poem. The two decide to fly to Sonora in an attempt to locate Cesaria. At the same time, Juan had assisted in rescuing Lupe, a teenage prostitute, from her cruel pimp Alberto. The pimp tells Juan to return Lupe to him, but with the help of Arturo and Ulysses, the two barely avert a gunfight. The gang departs Mexico City and travels to Sonora, where Cesaria was last seen. The novel's second portion, the Savage Detectives has over 40 narrators spanning 20 years, from 1976 to 1996. The narrative takes the form of interview-style monologues with individuals from all over the globe, each of whom has been introduced to Arturo and Ulysses. The reader learns that Arturo and Ulysses spent some time in Europe, mostly living as bohemians and attending pubs and camps. The novel takes the reader from North America to Africa to Europe, with hundreds of individuals describing their experiences. While each speaker has a unique impression about the two men, most people believe they are pretentious poets who upset or disgust everyone they meet. At one point, the reader learns that, frightened of receiving an unfavorable review for his work, Arturo meets a literary critic in Spain and dared him to a sword fight. The third portion of the book, The Deserts of Sonora, is told by Juan Garcia Madero and takes the reader back in time to immediately after the first part of the book. The segment is set in the Sonora Desert in 1976 and follows Arturo, Ulises, Juan, and Lupe. Juan demonstrates his wide knowledge in the vehicle on the trip to Sonora by asking the others whether they know the definitions of esoteric literary terminology such as quiasmo and epanalepsis. Lupe soon takes charge of the game, asking Juan whether he knows street slang like La Grandiose. Alberto and a dishonest Mexican police officer pursue the gang, which drives aimlessly through the labyrinth of dust-filled towns in quest of Caesarea. When the gang first meets Caesarea, they find her strange and digressive. She talks vaguely about the future and wears a switchblade by her side, believing she is in danger. The novel concludes with Juan and Lupe traveling across Sonora, 
and the next few pages just list the names of the areas the pair seems to drive to. Juan picks up Chesaria's journals, maybe inspired, and the novel's concluding sections display puzzles evocative of one of Cesaria's visual poetry. While the novel does not include much literature from the individuals in the plot, the book's basic fabric is built up of literary allusions, and there is a constant conversation about the nature of making art. Ulysses, for example, seems to be a connection to James Joyce's classic Ulysses, and his name may predict his future journey-related life. Some commentators feel Arturo represents Bolaño's alter personality. The author creates a tale of rich and lively language and illusion, providing an energizing glimpse of a moment of pure creative invention, strong enough to spark a literary revolution. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.